Hi there, you guys were asking for a character controller just like you would see in Archer. And right here, I have a character controller. So how it works, you can click anywhere on the screen and it works just like a joystick. So it's like an invisible joystick that will follow wherever your mouse goes or wherever your touch on your phone is gonna move. So here is the demo for that character controller. So now let's go take a look how it's working and how it's set up. So if we go to our character and go to the graph for this character and all of the logic for what you just saw is inside here. So we got camera rotation and I'll show that in a little bit. And then we have some coin logic, restart logic, jump logic, hit logic, some uh, friction logic to make the movement smoother. And the most important one of all is this node right here. So it's a joystick move 3D preset. And in this node, all of the logic for character movement that you just saw is inside here. So the settings that I have here is to control speed. So if we want your character to move faster, you can change that speed and now the character is gonna move faster. And same thing, you can slow down and this is the max speed for the character. So if you click and move just a little bit, you can see that the character is moving slow as well. So it is a gradual speed up. Now, uh, the next settings is for screen X control and screen Y control. Uh, this is how you can configure which axis do you want to move in the world based on your screen movement. So if I move on the screen in X direction, you can see that the player is moving in X direction as well. So if I want the character to move in the Z direction instead when I'm moving in the next direction, I can change that. And now you can see that if I move side to side, the character is actually moving in the Z direction. So this is how you can configure the settings. And if you set it to zero, then you will disable that altogether. And the character will only be able to move forward and back based on what we have configured for screen Y movement, which is set to Z. So let's put that one back and now our character is back moving smoothly again. And then the next setting that we have here is a radius of the joystick. So this is actually a setting for inches of your display. So on a phone, if you have a bigger device, you still want the player to move same amount of motion and get the same control. So if someone switches to a tablet, you don't have to swipe half across the screen to get the character to move. Currently set to 0.4 inches, but you can play with this number for what feeling you're trying to go for. And if we increase it to one inch, you can see that the sensitivity is not as much. I have to move the mouse a bit more for the character to speed up to the fullest speed. So I'm gonna set it back to 0.4. Based on my testing, that seemed like a good starting point, but you can change that to your liking. Now, there's also the option of use offset. So if we click and read the summary that I have here, so it uses camera Y angle for input calculations. So if you have this turned on, it actually looks at how your camera is looking at the character and uses that angle to offset it. Now, let me rotate the camera. I can do it with E or Q on the keyboard. And now you can see that if I move the joystick up, the character is moving up in my current view. So if I turn this off, moving up is not gonna actually move the character up, but the world up position. That's the use offset option. The subgraph also comes with the standard enable disable options and enable on start. Just the standard settings that I 
add to all the action graphs so that you can disable the logic in your game when you need to. Now this unit is available in my Spock package so if you actually have purchased it, the Spock package, the new update that I've just posted is going to have this unit. Also it's going to have this new demo or template game called The Lost World and if you use the Spock package before you know where it is. It's inside Spock game templates and in here you can find The Lost World so one more thing that I want to mention is how the animation works. So you can see that whenever I move, the character is actually animating. Not the best animation, but I just quickly threw something together to add some life to the character. And what I have updated in Spock is that feature. So if we go and look at the character animations in here, on the parameters you can find that I have a move parameter here and this move parameter from now on is going to be set by the move node so wherever you use the node move this node is now going to be trying to set the parameter of move to the speed that the object is moving if you don't have an animator it's not gonna do anything but if you have an animator and you don't have the move parameter in animator, you're just going to see a warning saying that a move parameter is not set. So I added the same thing for the jump. So the jump unit also has a parameter that it sets. So the parameter that it will be setting is a trigger and called jump, just like the node name that we have here. That's also one of the updates that I'm pushing with this Joystick Move 3D preset. And we can actually test the jump here. So if we click space, then we can see the character jump. If you still don't have this package of all of these uh, nodes that I've created, now is going to be a good time to get it because I'm making a, a summer sale right now. So if you're interested in getting these units to help you with making uh, your games that is going to be available for you at a discount and any purchases that i get for this package supports me in making more tutorials on this youtube channel and also improving this package so thanks to all that already purchased and if you're interested in supporting this channel and this package you can do that by purchasing the package or if you want to support on Patreon, that is also an option.